council members and participants, we are live. Thank you. Uh, good morning. Before we begin the public hearing, I will make the following announcement. Due to the continuing threat to public health from COVID-19 and the Delta variant, city council committees are currently meeting remotely. We're using Microsoft Teams to make these remote the public may view and offer public testimony at public hearings of city council committees are included in the public hearing notices that are published in the daily news inquirer legal intelligencer prior to the hearings and can also be found on phlcouncil.com I now note that the hour has come. Rachel, will you please call the roll to take attendance? Members that are in attendance will please indicate that you are present when your name is called. Also, please say a few brief words when responding so that your image will be displayed on the screen when you speak. Vice Chair Brian O'Neill. Good morning, everyone. Council Member Alan Dom. Good morning, Madam Chair, colleagues, and the administration, Madam Controller. Council Member, Council Member Helen Gim. Good morning, Madam Chair. Good morning, colleagues. Council Member Gilmore Richardson. Good morning, Madam Chair. Good morning, colleagues. And that is all. Thank you. A quorum of the committee is present and this hearing is now called to order. This is the public hearing of the Committee on Labor and Civil Service on Bill Number 210772. Rachel, will you please read the title of the bill? 210772, an ordinance amending Title 22 of the Philadelphia Code entitled Public Employees Retirement Code by codifying the Pension Board's pre-existing policy and practice to perform an annual stress test of the retirement system in accordance with industry standards all under certain terms and conditions. Thank you, Rachel. Before we begin to hear testimony from witnesses we have for today, everyone who has been invited to the meeting to testify should be aware that this public hearing is being recorded. Because the hearing is public, participants and viewers have no reasonable expectation of privacy. By continuing to be in the meeting, you are consenting to being recorded. Uh, additionally, prior to recognizing members uh, for questions and comments they have for witnesses. I will note for the record at this time that we will use the chat feature available in Microsoft Teams to allow members to signify that they wish to be recognized. In order to comply with the Sunshine Act, the chat feature must only be used uh, for uh, this purpose. Um, now, before I ask Rachel to call the first panel, to, uh, to testify for bill number 210772. I want to make uh, some opening uh, comments. Uh, first and foremost, I was proud to introduce this bill that will require the pension board to perform an annual stress test of the retirement system in accordance with industry standards. Uh, the legislation effectively codifies the Board of Pensions and Retirement's pre-existing policy and practice of conducting, analyzing, and reporting on annual stress testing as a requirement in its investment policy statement, a policy that was formally adopted by the Pension Board in March 2019. Um, I want to say a huge and special thank you to Pew Charitable Trust for bringing this legislative uh, idea to my attention and also for their guidance throughout the development uh, of this bill. It was great working with them, teamwork. I also want to thank the members of the pension board, and in particular, uh, Fran Bielli, uh, Rob Dubow, Brian Coughlin, Carl Stooks, um, Ron Stagliano, Veronica Pankey, and our city controller, Rebecca uh, Reinhardt. Um, I know we had numerous communications back and forth about this legislation, as well as an in-person meeting, and I want to thank each of you for going through the process with me um, before the bill was even introduced. I'd like 
like to work out those kinks uh, beforehand whenever possible. Um, while I and my colleagues recognize that the pension board has regularly conducted and formally adopted annual stress testing in 2019, it is really advantageous for the city of Philadelphia to emulate the best practices for integrating the results of the stress test analysis into the city's budget planning and forecasting process similar to what other jurisdictions have done and thus to codify the existing policy and practice of annual stress testing and reporting by uh, the pension board. Uh, with this legislation, it is the intent of city council to codify the best practices of this current pension board so as to ensure that these practices uh, survive any change in leadership or membership. I look forward to hearing testimony today from a few individuals that we worked with in order to make this legislation a reality. Um, with uh, that being said, Rachel, can you please uh, call the first panel uh, we have to testify this morning on bill number 210772. And before you say their names, I've got to say to Rob DeBow and Fran Bielli, if they're watching, um, we've been at this for a very, very long time. And uh, I'm proud of the work that we've been able to accomplish together. No Johnny come lately to present and retirement security in our city. So the, the first and only pa panel we have to testify this morning are Rob Dubow, Rebecca Reinhardt, and Greg Menis. Thank you. Good morning. Um, are you connected, uh, Rob Dubow? Did you say Rob's name first, Rachel? Okay. Rob, while well, we see you, are you connected and ready to proceed? I am. Please Please state your name for the record and proceed with your testimony. Good morning, and thank you and to members of the committee for the uh, opportunity to testify in support of Bill Number 210772, um, which, as you noted, would codify the board's existing policy uh, to perform and um, report on annual stress tests of the retirement system. I forgot to say my name, Rob Dubo. I'm the finance director. Um, and thank you again, uh, Chair Parker, for this legislation and, as you noted, for your continuing support of pensions over the years. We really appreciate it. Um, we agree that stress testing is important to understanding the risks that pension plans face um, and helps to manage those risks. We appreciate your effort to institutionalize this type of stress testing uh, that the board already undertakes. And we want to thank you um, for the consideration and the opportunity to testify. And we're happy to answer any questions you have. Thank you, uh, Rob. Rachel, next was? Uh, the controller, Rebecca Reinhardt. Controller Reinhardt, good morning. Good to see uh, good, you. Good to see you, too. Uh, good morning, uh, Chair Parker and uh, the members of the Committee on Labor and Civil Service. I'm Rebecca Reinhardt, the city controller, and also I'm a pension board trustee. And today I'm testifying in favor of bill number 210772. In 2019, my office performed an analysis of the uh, Philadelphia's pension fund, and we released a report. Specifically, my office analyzed the pension fund stability and its capacity to meet future obligations. Um, and as a result of this analysis, I propose conducting annual stress tests of the pension fund, which is a best practice uh, for assessing a pension plan's ability to meet obligations and adding this requirement to the pension plan's investment policy statement. Uh, this policy statement was approved by the pension board and added in 2019. Uh, and since uh, the release of my office's analysis and the update to the policy, stress tests have been completed regularly. I join the other trustees of the pension board in commending uh, Council Member Parker, Chair Parker, and City Council for building on this work. Uh, I do think it's very important to codify uh, this practice into legislation so that uh, it continues no matter who the trustees of the pension board are. So thank you, uh, Chair Parker. I, I truly appreciate it. Uh, it's a positive step to continuing uh, strengthening the health of our pension fund by ensuring that this practice will continue beyond the term of the current trustees. So thank you, and I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. Thank you, uh, Controller. Uh, Greg, I've never been so happy to see Pew. <laughs> State your name for the record and proceed with your testimony. Sure. Uh, uh, Madam Chair, members of the committee, uh, thank you very much for having us today. My name is Greg Menis, and I'm Director of the Strengthening Public Sector 
Retirement Systems Project at the Pew Charitable Trust. Our project conducts nonpartisan independent research and provides technical assistance to policymakers across the country to help ensure that state and local retirement systems are sustainable, affordable, and secure. Uh, my comment th commentary this morning will include a brief overview of public pension stress testing, uh, touch on Pew's previous analysis of Philadelphia's retirement system, including the significant progress the city has made in recent years on pension sustainability, and then discuss some thoughts on how this bill we think will be useful going forward. Uh, in a nutshell, pension stress testing involves combining forward-looking risk analysis performed by public, plan act public plans and their actuaries with revenue projections of the sponsoring government and looking at these issues under a range of different economic conditions. In effect, these analyses examine what if scenarios, for example, what if investment returns are higher or lower than expected, and are designed to help policymakers assess the, assess the potential impacts of financial market risk and economic uncertainty on both the pension balance sheets and the government budgets. To date, 13 states have adopted uh, policies similar to what you all are considering today, including the state of Pennsylvania. If we turn our attention to the city, uh, as you know, the city acts as the government sponsor for pension retirement plans, which administer benefits as part of the compensation package for both retired workers and over 28,000 current city employees. As of fiscal year 2020, the system was less than 50% funded. That's based on the assets that have been set aside to pay for the promised benefits. And that's one of the lowest funded ratios in the country. However, it's important to note that the system's low funded status can largely be attributed to underfunding in decades past. And there is very clear evidence that corrective action taken by the city in recent years to increase annual pension contributions, lower benefit costs, as well as mitigate financial market risk have had a significant and measurable impact on improving the current status of city pensions. In fact, Pew's assessment of these measures uh, was the focus of a report we published in 2018, a stress test of Philadelphia's retirement system. And our central finding was that current policies and past reforms were very likely to be sufficient to continue improving the funded status of the city pensions under a range of di different economic conditions, even under a significant recession scenario. Of course, there has been a cost associated with raising the share of city resources going to pensions. Uh, over the past five years, for example, annual contributions by the city government uh, have averaged more than $700 million or approximately 10 to 15% of total city revenue. Um, and, uh, and that suggests that the fiscal health of the pension will continue to improve, but we also see that the share of city revenue is expected to go down as part of these actions. And in fact, just last year, the city's efforts to achieve these results were recognized by the Government Finance Officers Association when Philadelphia received the 2020 Award for Excellence in Government Finance, specifically for the work done on pensions. So with that background in mind, how would this bill we are discussing today help to inform policymakers in the future? Well, first off, from a process perspective, as we've already touched upon, the requirements of the bill would build on the pension plan's already strong reporting practices by providing an annual assessment that also incorporates projections of city revenues under different economic conditions and enable to examine what these risks might present both for the pension fund and for the city's budget. And as I noted, much of the work is already being done by the pension plans themselves. And I think the bill rightly provides for discretion to ensure that the analysis is fit for the purpose of examining the most pressing risks at any given time. And to understand what that means, I think we look no further than the recent economic volatility since the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, in the spring of last year, for example, stock prices fell by more than 30%. And, with combined, and when combined with plummeting state and local revenue due to the sudden stop of the economy, the focus at that time was on whether governments had the resources to increase or at least maintain their annual scheduled payments to pensions. And by way of example, stress test analysis played a significant role in helping policymakers in New Jersey understand the need to maintain fiscal discipline and develop solutions, which has kept them on the path to make full actuarial contributions for the first time this century. Now, of course, if we shift to today, the circumstances are now entirely different. Fueled by over $5 trillion in federal stimulus, financial markets have soared, and public pension funds posted returns averaging 27% for the fiscal year ending in June. That's the highest rate of return we've seen in a, in a generation. And in addition, state and city finances across the country have improved considerably. But while economic, economic conditions have changed dramatically, the value of having a routine and transparent process to examine forward-looking risks, and as Madam Chair said, to incorporate into the long-term budgeting process, it really still applies. 
So just as stress testing helped to navigate the fiscal challenges during the initial months of the pandemic, it can also help cities and states to navigate the current environment. And I'd like to provide a few examples of how we look at this issue, both nationally and how it might apply to Philadelphia. Although I would hasten to add, these are thoughts that we uh, put forward with clear deference to the plan administrators, the actuaries and city officials who have done such an excellent job on managing these issues. First off, with investment returns of 27%, and that's uh, essentially the number Philadelphia achieved as well. Uh, there's a significant increase of unexpected gains in pension coffers. And, and our estimation will improve the uh, funded ratio to something in the neighborhood of 60%. And that's really significant progress. At the same time, the other side of these once in a generation returns is that stock market valuations are at an all time high. And so as a result, continuing to mon monitor potential investment risk and downside economic scenarios continues to be an important consideration. But to put it a little bit more clearly in the current context, it's also true that the impact of federal stimulus, as well as supply chain disruptions, has increased the risk of higher inflation and actually reported inflation if you look at some of the reports from the federal government just this week. And so considering a scenario that contemplates inflation or stagflation is an example of something that I think the bill allows for in terms of exercising discretion to examine the risks that are most relevant at a point in time. And it's also true the significant gains uh, in our, our estimation are going to provide a substantial increase in the pension adjustment fund and that's something that's been set aside to help uh, workers in retirement and so analysis related to that issue is something i think might also be a consideration as you all are looking at this report on a regular basis and, and then finally i think we also see this as more of an opportunity rather than a problem as it relates to philly and by that i mean the city has taken such incredible steps we think there is a very strong opportunity that pension system funded ratios will continue to improve while also taking up less as a share of the budget going forward. And so being able to understand and consider that as part of a broader set of issues, including what the city is planning to do with federal stimulus money and what resources may be available to make investments across the board, uh, I think is one another way that this kind of analysis can help, um, again, as part of an integrated long-term budget planning process. So in conclusion, we think this bill is well-considered legislation that will build on the measurable and important progress the city has already made and the leading practices of the city's pension system to help guide policymakers towards ensuring the retirement security of Philadelphia public workers and the long-term health of city finances. And appreciate the opportunity to be with you this morning. Greg, thank you so very much uh, for your testimony and also uh, noting for um, the record that when uh, Pew made its recommendation um, and its report on this issue uh, in, in 2018, we uh, really did view it as being uh, forward thinking and again want to state for the record uh, that it was my honor and privilege uh, to work uh, with you all um, along with the pension board um, to get this uh, legislation crafted. With that being said, are there any questions or comments from members of the committee? Um, hearing none, is there anyone else here to testify on the bill whose name has not yet been called? Hearing none, I want to thank all of the witnesses for their participation today. We value your opinions. Uh, I now invite all witnesses to please disconnect from the hearing before Thomas, we go into... Yes. I believe um, Catherine Gilmore Richardson has a comment. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I didn't see the chat. I apologize. Chair recognizes uh, Council Member Gilmore Richardson. Thank you so much, Madam Chair. I just wanted to pause for the opportunity to thank you uh, and to thank your team, members of the Pension Board, Pew Charitable Trust, and everyone who worked together uh, on this most important piece of legislation. We know that uh, from the 2020 award that our pension board and fund has been performing rather well. We know that this is just another step uh, in the right direction to ensure that uh, our pension fund is healthy uh, for all of our retirees and for our future retirees. So I just wanted to say thank you all so very much. Have a great afternoon.
Thank you. And Councilman, uh, Council Member Gilmore Richardson, before you go off screen, let me just also note for the benefit of the view in public um, that you have also um, expressed, uh, and, and I've been uh, pleased to note your laser focus on the issue of retirement security here in the city of Philadelphia. And I just wanted to thank you um, as well for your work on this very important issue. With that being said, uh, any more questions? Have I missed anyone else in the chat, Rachel? Not that I see, no. Okay. Hearing none, I want to thank all of the witnesses for their participation today. We value your opinions. I now invite all witnesses to please disconnect from the hearing before we go into our public meeting. We will now pause the proceedings briefly and multiple participants uh, will leave the hearing. This concludes the public hearing of the committee on bill number 210772. We will now go into the public meeting to consider the action to be taken on this bill. We will now convene the public meeting. Rachel, will you please call the roll to take attendance? Members that are in attendance will please indicate that you are present when your name is called. Also, please say a few brief words when responding so that your image will be displayed on the screen when you speak. Vice Chair Brian O'Neill. Councilmember O'Neill, are you still there? Okay. I see he, he is on, but he is I, I can I can literally see him. I just see that he is muted. Okay. We'll we'll still have a quorum even if he did we don't hear from him. So Councilmember Alan Dom. Present. Councilmember Gilmore Richardson. Good morning, Madam Chair and colleagues. I'm present. And Councilmember Helen Gim. I am present. And Chair Chairwoman, do you can we send the script to Councilmember Gilmore Richardson so she can make please, the motion? I'll please do. right now. Okay. Thank you so very much, Rachel. Councilmember Gilmore Richardson, you just let us know once you have it. I've sent it to you. I'm ready. Okay. Okay. Thank you. We will now go into our public meeting. The chair recognizes Councilmember Gilmore Richardson for a motion on bill number 210772. Thank you, Madam Chair. I move that bill number 210772 be reported from this committee with a favorable recommendation and further move that the rules of council be suspended to permit first reading of this bill at the next session of council. Is there second. a second? Second. second? The chair notes for the record that council member Dom seconds the motion. It has been moved and properly seconded that bill number 210772 be reported from this committee with a favorable recommendation and further move that the rules of council be suspended to permit first reading of this bill at the next session of council. All those in favor of the motion will signify by saying aye. 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 Th those opposed? The ayes have it and the motion uh, carries. This concludes the business before the Committee on Labor and Civil Service uh, today. And to my council colleagues, what if all council hearings move this quickly? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all so very much for being with us today. Have a great day, everyone. Okay. Thank you so much, Madam Chair. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Good job. Thank you.